My name is Natalie Newcomb with the Korea Society in New York City. Today we're speaking with Michael Aronson, an American who's earned a following on YouTube with his entertaining songs and parodies about life in Korea. So thank you for being with us, Michael. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Your YouTube channel has over 3 million views. Did you expect so much interest when you first started making videos about Korean food and pop culture? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, I don't know, it just, the first music video just kind of took off and I just hope people kept following and they did. I don't, I mean, I'm glad they like my stuff. I don't, I didn't expect it, but it's good. Okay. Interesting. What has the reaction in Korea been like? It's been really positive. Uh, I haven't gotten a lot of direct, like in-person feedback. It's mm -hmm. mostly through media channels and online. But mm -hmm. I mean, people who I know, like, or people who know people who know me, like they all come to me and give me good feedback. So that's, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You've won some awards. Do people recognize you? for these awards, or just in general, do they recognize yeah. you on the street? I've been recognized a few times, but not really. I think it's mostly because when I'm out, I'm not wearing my sunglasses and <laughs> the shirt. I think if I did that more, maybe they would. I'll try that. I've had people recognize me, but tell me after the fact, like online, they're like, oh, I saw you today. <laughs> I could have said something. <laughs> well, what's next for you? Um, well, I filmed a music video while I've been home in New York. It's kind of different. Uh, I have to do a lot of editing. I haven't mm -hmm. started yet, but I think it'll be good. And when I go back, I'm already writing a new song. It's a cover song of a, it's not a pop, it, it was fairly popular, but uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So you do a lot of your own editing and filming, all yourself, is that right? Um, aside from asking people to hold the camera for me, <laughs> it's all me, which is difficult, but at least it comes out the way I mostly want it to. It's really impressive, actually, that you do all of that by yourself. Uh, what was your favorite video to make? I think my favorite was, it's called Yana Fever. It was my <laughs> second song about Kim Yana, and it's, it's just kind of weird and whimsical, but I really like how it came out. Well, then you've also been on a lot of uh, different media outlets, right? Yeah. Uh, we saw, I think, by email, uh, Daniel sent over an interview that you had done just recently. Did you do that while you were in New York? Um, um, I did do what? Who, what was it? <laughs> I don't recall the name of the paper at this one. I think it was Jonga Yobu. Oh, oh, that one, like most people, I guess if they search my name, that one comes up first. Because mm -hmm. the guy who wrote it sometimes tells me, he's like, I feel like your manager because I keep <laughs> giving people your phone number because his article always comes up first. Oh, well, that's, that's kind of nice of him to do that. Yeah. What other um, media or press outlets have you sort of been in touch with? I guess most of the major papers have contacted me mm -hmm. for interviews. It's, it feels like it's been a steady flow. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, real papers and online papers too. Some student papers, which are cool. And also uh, some TV stations. I mean, I guess they have various shows, so sometimes like, I've been contacted by the same station, but it's always for a different show, so I'm never really sure, and it's, it's always a different writer. Um, they mostly look for similar things, although what's kind of, it's difficult and fun is they want to film me filming one of my videos. Aww. So if I'm not filming anything, it's kind of tough, and I'm like, well, I'm not filming anything right now. You, I don't want to, like, fake a video just <laughs> right. so you can get footage but um, when I am filming something I'm like okay come out with us like and I get them to kind of like ask permission in a certain mm -hmm. area. like once uh, a, a video crew came with us when it were when I was filming my Hanbok rap video <laughs> to Kyungbok Kung and oh. they they like got us permission just to film like in front of it with the guards there oh that's really neat which would have been 
probably harder if it was just me and my friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're just like, I'm wearing a hanbok, can I <laughs> film with these guys? I don't know. It's kind of, and it looks more professional <laughs> to have another crew filming right. while we're filming. No one knows that it's like, that they're filming us filming, but it, I don't know, it's kind of fun. So why, why did you decide to do the Hamburg parody? Um, sort of curious about that, especially when you're sort of lifting weights, <laughs> things like that. I mean, I guess, there's a real message and like Aww. a funny presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I got the idea uh, during Chuseok, like mm. I was calling a friend from, I was at the airport and I think it was Chuseok weekend and they said like, oh, I'm wearing my hanbok. And I thought like, wow, you have one? Like no one has one. And I thought like, that's kind of sad. Like mm. there should be more, uh, more opportunities to wear them. Actually, when I go back, I'm planning kind of an event. I'm not sure what the turnout will be, but I, I called it, I haven't announced it yet, but it's gonna be called the Hanbok March. <laughs> like, I just want anyone who has a Hanbok, or maybe if they go out and buy it, because I've looked into rental places mm. and it's expensive to rent even for one day, but I want people to either go buy them or if they already have them, and we'll all meet in like a public place and just walk like, I have some ideas, but maybe at Yoido, like the park there, mm. or along Chungaechan, like, just a, like a bunch of people, hopefully more than 30, like, all just walking in books. Like, no one will expect it. Mm. People, I don't think anyone's seen that before, unless it's like some holiday and right. there's a parade. Mm. Like, I don't know, people need more reason to wear them because mm -hmm. they're just cool and it's traditional, but no one really cares. Mm -hmm. what, what do you find so fascinating about Korean culture in general? Like, what makes you want to stay there and continue to do these sorts of things? Uh, making parodies or just sort of learning more about the culture itself? I guess it's kind of, I don't know if it's what attracts me, but it does kind of intrigue me that mm. Korean culture only exists where there are like Koreans. Like it's not really represented by art or entertainment right. or food. And it's like the dynamics between them. Like when there's a, like at least, well, I guess two Koreans, but especially more than that, like you really feel how they're treating each other. Like what the relationships are, like, you kind of, even if you don't understand what they're saying, you feel the nuances, and I kind of think that's really interesting. I've never really observed that with other societies. So I kind of, I kind of like the fact that I slowly understand more, and right. I feel there's more to learn. Why do you enjoy living in Korea? Um, I feel, I mean, I've only really lived in New York before, but I feel it's much, more of a social atmosphere like mm -hmm. there are a lot of things to do a lot of similar things to do but they're so easy to do to do just like to meet people and just choose any cafe just hang out there's so many places just to go and talk with people and like people are rarely ever alone well like especially Koreans so it just feels like like I'm never really lonely there and mm -hmm. I like that feeling or the feeling that I could just meet anyone anytime and hang out anywhere. So do you feel like you're treated differently since you're s sort of helping to promote, promote Korean culture to foreigners who may be interested in the culture so they come to your YouTube page to find out something more? Yeah, I, I like it. I mean, what's it? I have a friend who once said, he's Korean, he said, I don't like foreigners who come to Korea and don't try to speak the language, except for Michael, because I know he <laughs> likes Korea. I mean, <laughs> I've tried learning, but I, I, I was actually taking a Korean class right before I started making music videos, and I stopped because the videos were taking so much time. Mm. And I mean, I haven't really attempted to do both at the same time. Like, I feel like I always kind of want to go back mm -hmm. and study again, but I feel like I'm putting my efforts into something that's good and I think people recognize how busy 
I am and how much time that takes, and they realize that kind of offsets me not really speaking Korean or, yeah, they see the effort. Well, thank you for being with us, Michael. Our guest has been Michael Aronson, and you can find his YouTube channel by searching Seoul Subway Song. For more information about the Korea Society, please visit www.koreasociety.org.